Hello, my name is William Ernest. I am currently a senior at the Florida State University. I'm working on my second bachelor's degree in computer science and I'll graduate in the spring. I uh, received my first bachelor's degree in chemistry from the University of Tennessee back in 2008, I think, or 2007, one of those. But uh, I currently live in Chattanooga, Tennessee and work as a chemist for the Tennessee Valley Authority, which I've done for about eight years now. Um, I plan after I graduate to pursue something computer related at TVA. Um, some of my hobbies here in Tennessee are include a lot of mountain biking and working out and that's about all I have time for with, with this. So without further ado, do, please uh, enjoy my presentation. This is my presentation on the Squirrel Programming Languages, or COP4020. The topics we're going to discuss for the language will be the history of Squirrel, what Squirrel is used for, the characteristic traits of Squirrel, what makes Squirrel interesting, and then I will summarize the conclusion. In the early 2000s, a man named Alberto Di Michaelis was working for a game developer named Cryotech. The industry was experiencing problems using the Lua scripting language because of the way it handled garbage collecting and some of the other small syntax issues. Di Michaelis decided to try and fix the issues with Lua, but quickly realized it would be easier to implement an entire new language. Alberto kept a lot of similarities from Lua, but made the new language resemble C, which had an easier syntax to follow. Also, he made garbage collection more predictable so it can be planned and not happen at the worst times. In 2003, Alberto released his first version of Squirrel. As of now, Squirrel is up to version 3.07 and is available under the MIT license. There is an upcoming release of the new version, 3.1. What Squirrel is and what it is used for. Squirrel is a high-level, object-oriented scripting language. It's implemented through a virtual machine and embedded in C and C++ applications. Generally, it is used for video game programming. Several of the games and applications created using Squirrel are Codeblocks IDE, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, My Life as a King, Left 4 Dead 2, and Portal 2. While Squirrel syntax is very much like C++, the language is meant to be dynamic like its predecessor Lua. Some of the features of Squirrel are that it supports classes, inheritance, higher order functions, lexical scoping, tail recursion, exception handling, automatic memory management, and garbage collection. Cool. The variables in Squirrel. Variables are implicitly globally scoped. They have to be exclusively defined as local to be locally scoped. The variables are dynamically typed. There are seven built-in data types, which are the int, the float, the bool, the string, the array, the table, and the blob. There are also user-created objects or classes. Ints and floats are both signed 32-bit values. They, Squirrel does not have an unsigned version. Booleans are 1-bit values for true and false. The way strings are handled in Squirrel is that they are not null terminated, they store their own length, and Squirrel allows the user to mark the string as being verbatim which allows the string to be displayed literally. Here's a little snippet of code that kind of shows how this verbatim character is used. You have your HTML identifier and the whole rest of this HTML code that's placed in there is actually placed in as a string. And so when you go to print this, you can have it print out 
in the in the web page like this. And I, I just kind of thought that was a little neat, so I wanted to, to add that. Arrays are declared and executed much like they are in uh, C and C++. Um, tables are uh, they're set up so you can use a key value pair and set up like sets or, or as what we might remember as a, an associative array or kind of like what we've been using lately as a, a hash table. Blobs are user-defined blocks of data. Uh, these can be set up however you want them to. It has read, write pointers and can be accessed like a file. Like C and C++, Squirrel allows the user to create objects using the class keyword. And like C and C++, each class can have a constructor, but in Squirrel it is simply called constructor, open close parentheses. The constructor is run each time a class is instantiated and is used to set the default values of the object or whatever the user deems pertinent. Classes can also use inheritance by simply using the extends keywords and on the base class. Squirrel uses all the normal control flow statements, if else, while, do while, and switch. All of these control structures follow the C, C++ style syntax and execute in the same manner as expected. There's also support for the tertiary if else that it also follows the C, C++ style syntax. A built-in looping structure in Squirrel to use for looping through data structures is going to be the for each keyword. And this can be used, if you look at the picture below, if you just say for each index value in a and a is a table of some sort where value is just an index exception handling exception handling in squirrel is done much like C and Java using the try catch and throw keywords the syntax and execution of these is also similar to C C++ and Java Squirrel has two different assignment operators. First is the regular assignment operators, which is the equal sign. And this is used on regular data types to set one equal to the other. The second is called the new slot operator and is used to create a new slot in tables. If the table does not have a slot, it will create a new slot. If the table does have a slot, it will just equate whatever you have next to it into that slot in the table. Squirrel supports arithmetic operations. Those arithmetic operations can work with the regular data structures of plus, minus, multiply, divide, and mod. You can also use the compact version where if you're only using two expressions, you can do plus equals, minus equals, multiply equals, divide equals, and mod equals. If you're doing unary, versions of increments and decrements, plus plus and minus minus are both supported. Relational operators are supported in Squirrel. You can perform equals, less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, or not equal to. Squirrel also has a three-way relational operator that is using the operator of less than, equal to, and greater than, and it will set a value equal to either negative 1, 0, or 1 based on whether two expressions are either less than, equal to, or greater than each other. You also have the type of relational operator, which will return the name of the type as a string. And you have the instance of relational operator, which returns a bool if it's an instance of or not. Squirrel supports the standard bitwise operators of AND, OR, 
exclusive OR, NOT, left shift, and right shift. But Squirrel also supports an one unsigned right shift operator, but it does not support an unsigned left shift operator. Squirrel is going to look and feel a lot like C and C++, but what is going to stand out for Squirrel is the memory management and garbage collection. C and C++ relies on the user to manage memory and garbage collection, which can lead to many errors and leaks in programs. Squirrel, on the other hand, has automatic memory management and garbage collection. This is one of the principal reasons for the creation of Squirrel in the first place. Also, if you're a fan of video games, Squirrel is primarily used to program video games, which may also make Squirrel an interesting language to pick up. To conclude, I just want to reiterate that Squirrel is a high-level, object-oriented, and automatically memory-managed and garbage-collected programming language. Squirrel can be used to do most programming functions that one desires, but since it is meant to be embedded in another language and implemented through a virtual machine, it would probably not be suitable for most needs. Squirrel does resemble C and C++ for the majority of the control program flow aspects. It has been primarily used for video applications. If someone is interested in learning more about Squirrel, the best place to start will be the language's website, www.squirrellang.org. Thank you for listening to my presentations. If you have any questions or comments and would like to contact me, my email is wbe14b at my.fsu.edu. You can also catch me on the discussion board or on Slack at WB Ernest. Thank you.